You're listening to The Business Marketing Show, episode number 16. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com or on iTunes. Okay, hi everyone, Ed from Online Impact here with Brendan from The Search Engine Shop, hosting our favorite internet marketing business show called what is it called brendan the business marketing, business show. marketing show how many Absolutely. shows do you have that you have a favorite oh it's so many so many no not really so uh brendan how are you mate i'm good ed how about yourself very very good thank you uh we have a guest on the show today we have our first guest on the very show first guest. Yeah. and uh, we have known this particular person uh, for many, many years now, probably what five years, five years or so at least. Well, I have. You've probably known him for a bit longer. Yeah, five years, about um, the same. Since like two thousand and nine, right? Two thousand eight, two thousand nine, something. Yeah, yeah, end of two thousand nine. So, uh, so we're very fortunate to have him on. Uh, that person, his name is Matt Reed from uh, Photography Project and also from Perth Product Photography. And um, we worked with Matt and still do on uh, workshops, a series of workshops we run, uh, have been running in Perth for the last five years for small business, uh, teaching them all things online marketing and uh, and business related. So uh, Matt covers the areas of uh, photography and how to have your photos set up correctly on your website and also video as well. Um, now, uh, this interview that's coming up, Brendan did with Matt. Um, I was unable to, to be in on the interview, so Brendan did it himself, and uh, it went very well. There's some awesome content. So give us a bit of more of a background on what we've got coming up in this particular podcast, which is about photography. Sure. So uh, so I had a long chat with Matt, and we split it into two. So the, we talked first about Photography, so that's what this uh, interview is on, and I love working with Matt whenever he gets involved in with a client or a project work we're working on. It's just so much easier because, I mean, we've talked about this on other podcast episodes that the traffic problem is easy to solve. You can set up AdWords and start getting traffic today or tomorrow within 24 hours. So, getting yeah. more website visitors or more website traffic, you know, at the you know at the very simplest level is you know, basically a problem of spending money. Whereas getting people to actually pick up the phone or buy something or send an email inquiry or whatever it is, that's a whole different ball game and that requires a lot more work and psychology and there's a whole bunch of things that tie into it. It's not simply something you throw money at and fix the problem. So, you know, people, and you get it too, will do the workshops and everybody's looking for a magic bullet and some, you know, really weird questions and, you know, I, I generally respond and say there are no magic bullets. But if there was a magic bullet, photography, commercial grade photography on your website probably is the closest thing because it just makes the whole thing feel completely different and much more professional and people connect with it. So yeah. I try and get all of our clients to use Matt or our Perth clients to use Matt and get photography on the website, particularly of the people uh, their products, their, their place of business as well because it really is, you know, success online and getting people who are already on your website to pick up the phone and call, it's really about moving the first step of the sales process online and if they can see your staff and see your premises and see your products and, and whatever, it really gives them a, a much better feeling and gives them a connection to you and your business. So well, I think we talked for nearly 40 minutes so it's a bit of a longer episode we covered a whole bunch of stuff about photography, the different types of photography you can use on your website, why photography works, um, uh, what else, how to work with a photographer and how to get the most out of a photographer on your website. We also st- talked about stock photography and our favorite friend, I can't remember what his name, John oh, from yeah. Sydney or whatever his name is, <laughs> stock photography <laughs> man. We talked yeah. about him and you know, essentially it's the end of the stock photography era and that, that sort of stuff just doesn't cut it and if anything... It can actually turn people off when they see those fake, over-polished, I, I hate to say Americanized, but that's probably that's the only word I have yeah, for it, Americanized. It's, it's accurate, it's, yeah. Yeah, it is accurate. So, so we had an awesome chat um, and yeah, Matt cool. has two arms to his business. So he has Perth Product Photography, which is the studio part of his business. It's really more about um, taking uh, photos of products and kind of static things and then he has Photography yeah. Project, which is more about 
bigger photography projects, I guess, where the client gives him a brief and they, you know, they have to kind of scope it and work out. It's much more, um, you know, a bigger job. So those are the two arms to his business. So perthproductphotography.com.au and photographyproject.com.au. But um, awesome. definitely this one's a must listen. Like, like I said, man, and the traffic problem is easy to solve, but the conversion problem is a whole different ball game. And, you know, a lot of people are focused on video as well and putting money into video and attention to the video. But photography is that much easier and it's cheaper and you get photos done today and you can use them for years. So they yeah. really have a long, you know, long shelf life, whereas video because technology changes and the business might change, whatever's in the video might ne- not necessarily be applicable in six or 12 months time. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. episode. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Brendan. That is fantastic. So uh, we'll let people hear what you and Matt had to say right now. Here's the episode. So let's get into it, right? The first question, like, so for me, like from an online marketing perspective, photos are awesome. As soon as we have a client that has, professionally taken shots it just everything becomes much easier and you can see the difference when you add the, sh- the photos to the website both kind of in terms of the look and feel and uh, i guess in conversions as well they see the phone calls the inquiries going up and all that sort of stuff i guess uh, two questions for you one is i have the hardest time getting customers to actually take like they have the budget so the money's not the problem but just getting them to, you know, they ask what's next, what more can we do? And I'm always like, let's get professional photos taken, headshots, photos of the people, the place, you know, the products. And I just, I find it really hard to get them to move and actually do something about that. Do you, is there a reason for that? Am I, is there something more I could do to kind of get them into gear? I don't know. It's a, it's a yeah. funny one. Good, good question. And I think, I guess there's certain things you can do, but some people just get it and they they see the value or they've had a good experience and um, like the before and the after with the professional photos and they've, they've felt the increase of sales and like they just know it. Like they know it is like it's just a magic ingredient that's easy to implement and so they've had a good experience and they, they know it. Or if you're like a, from a design or a visual background or you're just wired that way, then you just you just know how you can transform a website or, or a brochure or any piece of marketing super quick and super easy with the right photos that tell the right story about that business. Yep. So so there's those people that get it and then there's people that have other skills and but they just don't get the visual. And so we work with all sorts of clients and some people just never get it and like there's no real um, – you would have worked with, with people like that where they just um, I guess don't value – marketing yeah. or websites or um, technology or anything, vehicles or there'll be certain things that are important to people. Some people have a spotless kitchen and a trashed bedroom. Like different <laughs> different things are important to different people and it's kind of hardwired in. So there's only so much you can do to convince, um, I think, people. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of what we've experienced. Some there's like kind of three types of people. Some people are like, yep, we know it's going to make a difference. Let's get it happening and, and start getting the benefit. Yep. Some people are like, well, we know we want our marketing to be as good as possible. Can you just show us what are the right ingredients to get the building blocks to get in place? And they kind of trust you. Um, and then others just will we'll, we'll never understand. Yeah, yeah. And I find as well, like once they have the photos, everything's so much easier. You can put them on Facebook, Twitter, like Google Plus on the website, they just once they have them, it's it's such an asset, and they can use it for years as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's that's and there's there's real value in even just using the same photo on the website and the brochure and the reception wall print and the Facebook, and so there's that brand kind of like the the images become part of your brand. Yeah, and so when people do see you in different, you know, have your business card or um, to see your email footer like it just strengthens that brand and just reinforces kind of who you are yep yep and what about you know you, I can buy you know well I have a DSLR they're so cheap now like and I get asked you know occasionally I'll have customers who want to take their own photos you know what's you explain to me I know the, the reason but I guess for people listening what's the big difference between using a professional photographer versus going out with your own camera and doing some snaps 
I guess um, I guess it's much cheaper to do it yourself or can be. So I think it's I think it comes down to the end application, like what you need the photos for. Like if you're making a handmade product and it retails for forty dollars each and they're one off individual pieces, like there's just no margin to be paying someone to take a picture of that product. And so really your effort's best spent trying to work out how to take the best photo of your handmade pieces as most economically as possible. And usually that's either doing it yourself or someone that you know. And then um, and, and then the other end, if you've got an image, you, like you're needing an image for a home page, it's gonna, possibly going to be the most viewed page on your website. It's going to sit there for the next year or two and you get X amount of hits a month. Like that's a that's thousands of eyeballs going to be looking at that picture. Then you get a lot more return on investment yep. in terms of um, the benefit that you get from that picture. So then it's... Um, yeah, there's, there's more returns so you can afford to invest a bit more to do a better job. In terms of um, the difference, then I guess when you employ someone to take a photo for you, um, that's the whole world of what makes a better photography. But like the things of, well, basically that person, depending who you get, they've taken tens of thousands of crappy photos <laughs> um, to, to hone their craft to know what's a good picture and that's like the slightest difference in background or there's all the technical but then there's just the feeling and the, the frame and what's in and what's not in the photo. What, what I, the, the toughest thing about taking a great photo is having as little as possible in the shot. Like I see a lot um, if you just go out and buy a camera and start taking pictures, there's, um, it's really hard to distill. Like the stronger the photo is, the less is in it. So the, the what's in it um, gives, gives more attention. So when I'm out taking shots for clients, it's all about that. What can I get out of this shot? What doesn't need to be in this shot to distill it down into just a really strong marketing photo? And there's just kind of no magic button or book or recipe for that. It's just just thousands and thousands. And like, like any craft or any um, specialty, it's, it's, it's just becoming proficient in it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're saying there's technical stuff you can learn, but then the rest is kind of feeling and experience, right? Pretty much. Like, like, like you said, the equipment's so accessible. It's amazing. You can go and buy an excellent camera and excellent lighting and, and all the bits and pieces. It's a, it's a brutal industry. There's a never-ending list of expensive things <laughs> yeah. to buy, and I love it. But, um, like, really, you can go and get a camera that's going to take a great shot, um, a great quality shot, but usually having a great camera is you just get a higher resolution crappy image, Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, it's not so much about the camera anymore. The technology is available to us all. It's more just how to work it and, and what's going to be in that frame and, and some buttons and dials to make it, make it look nice. Yeah, because when, when I get the, the – I see it all the time, like we're going to take our own photos. I'm like, oh, this can't end well. And then I get the photos back. And they're framed, like framing is a huge deal that people don't realize they're framed badly or this, like you said, there's something in the corner of the photo that just throws the whole thing out or yeah. just the lighting's wrong. Like, yeah, it's just. Yeah. Usually, like if we're talking people photography, it's all about the background. Like the person is the most important thing, of course, but the background is more important type thing. It's no use having a. Right. Like you see it all the time where a nice looking person, good expression and there's like someone else in the background with a weird look on their face or <laughs> telephone poles coming out of their head or something. So it's, it's yeah, it's to clean that up. Like you, you see all sorts and I, I work in the same office as a graphic designer and the poor thing, she gets sent a handful of images of say 10 board of directors that need to go in the annual report and um, yep, we've got the photos. They supply it to her, and one person's been pushed into a bush because they think that looks good, and the other person's on holiday, and the other person's in an office and looks like he hates his life. And it's like, how do you build a nice <laughs> marketing piece um, out of that? So it's yeah, we we see it all. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. So <laughs> why do you think? Like, I mean, you probably have your opinion. Why do the photos work so well? Like, why is you know what is it that makes the photos, makes a website or, or marketing piece so much better with good photos? I think it just makes you real. I think that's the biggest difference. Like, um, and we've been through um, 
I think we've been through the stock photography phase, so you can. You <laughs> well, that, can that's my next question. So that's right, perfect. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, like it's it, like people. We're just kind of hardwired to, you know, like we're we're curious about other humans, particularly, um, and so. This, when you're flicking through your Facebook feed or whatever, it's usually like the pictures of people or the videos of people that that grab your eye. Um, so I think something visually um, on your website all of a sudden makes it real, assuming you've got the right picture. And um, you, like with the stock photography phase, we've you can go and buy a perfect looking person at a perfect looking office desk talking to a perfect looking client and um, in that era, that worked really well. Um, we've kind of moved through that and now people want um, to be authentic, yep. I think. And so, so a good, like a, a typical assignment for us is can you come to our workplace and take photos of our people doing what we do looking really good so we can use for our website or brochure or whatever the marketing is? Yep. And that, um, it's usually like the, the people and the workplace and the environment that's not something you can really copy. Like that's yours, that's who you are and that's really easy to make, to kind of set you apart online because everyone's going to write how fantastic they are <laughs> and everyone's going to write what they specialise in. And, and um, for example, with photography, like you can look at any photographer's website and you know, kind of all say the same thing but it's kind of when you visually show what you do, that's when the, your point of difference stands out. Yep. And, or, or I guess that's the, that's the opportunity. And if you can capture that right, then it makes the marketing really easy. And if you capture that in crappy photos, then that makes the marketing really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love the, the, like a, I, two things that I say a lot. Yellow pages is dead and the age of stock photography is over. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 I reckon, I yeah. reckon. And it just feels fake. You see a website with that same, I don't know what his name is, John, Ed calls him John. It's the old, he's whatever, 55, 60, and you see him on the side of a bus and you see him in he brochures. He's and, everywhere. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It cracks me up when I see him. Yeah. It's a real, like, it's a real visceral turn. It turns you off. Like, the feeling is really negative when you see those fake, and they're really over-polished as well, those people stock photography photos it's just it's not a good thing no no and we, we, consumers are more savvy now and getting more educated so they know when something doesn't quite feel real yeah 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 for sure yeah so um so say someone okay so someone they sold on the photography they want to use it you know in their marketing what's the next step they they call you up and what do they say how much does it cost like what's the how does the typical engagement process work Pretty much. It's like um, usually an inquirer will be like, hey, we're getting a new website built. We need photos. Um, can you tell us what's involved? Can you tell us how much? Um, so if we're talking um, specifically, let's talk, say, specifically for a website. Yep. Um, the images can be applicable to anything, but that's a typical kind of thing that uh, people need photos for. So I guess um, the thing we take, good care in before the camera comes out is just working out like what um, what needs to be bottled up in a photo. There's no use going out and taking a bunch of pretty photos that don't quite um, hit the mark on what you're wanting to achieve. So thinking about, um, first of all, just thinking more big picture. It's like who are we? How do we want to be perceived? Um, who's going to be looking at the photo? Like who is our customer going to be and how would they what, what are they looking at? What, what level do they want to see us? Yep. Um, so just kind of getting a bit of a picture of, um, for example, it's um, let's talk about an industrial client. So um, they might have a workshop and they've got a bunch of equipment, skilled people in the workshop, and they're like, we need photos, but God knows what. Um, so I guess um, thinking about that, thinking about how they need to look and then getting specific about the website. So it's like, okay, so what pages are you going to have on your site? And let's look at what photos you might need. So there could be a home page, and that might have like a, a, a call it a hero shot, a hero. In a lot because it's in a prominent position. Yep. So, um, okay, we might want one or two great shots for the homepage that tell the story of the business. So it might be people in the workshop um, fabricating or doing what they do. Um, 
and then um, just moving through. So that might be the home page. Then there's the About Us page. So maybe you've got um, photos of the team. Any chance I think you can um, or any opportunity you've got to introduce pictures of people into your marketing, I would highly recommend it because that's the one thing that's unique about you and that's the one thing that will kind of set you apart and, and that makes you real. People buy from people and um, you're crazy if you're not milking that in your marketing. So um, the About Us page, you might you know, want a photo of the team or it could be the board of directors or it could be the key people that customers are going to deal with. Like it's so nice when you call up a company could be a podiatrist or it could be anything and you're actually looking at the picture of the person and you, when they answer the phone you know who they look like you've never spoken to them before but there's so much more of a connection when yep. you know what they look like um, that's that's a powerful thing so I guess it's just doing to get back to your question a bit of a stock take of okay this is the project it's a website what where are the photos going to go what potentially different photos um, are going to be needed for those different pages. Yep. And then pretty much getting like a little bit of a shot list, a hit list. So instead of getting there with the camera and taking a thousand photos and then getting back and trying to pick out what is going to be useful, usually pretty methodical and it's like let's these, – these ten photos are key. This is what we need to capture today. doesn't mean we can capture totally something unexpected and, and even more amazing, but that that's kind of the – the must-haves and once you get to that point then you know really what's involved with timing and logistics and and then it's possible to to quote so then you can quote on the project um, and then if that's suitable or not it can be adjusted up or down depending on what's needed um, and then then the shoot happens cool so then after the shoot and there's a, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is there's post-production that goes into the photos as well some editing and tweaking yeah yeah, completely, completely. And that that will depend a little bit on – that will depend a lot on the shot. So, you know, if we're doing a diamond ring in the studio, we might spend eight or ten hours of post-production on that single image. Wow. Um, if we're on site and we're doing, say, headshots, um, corporate headshots, like all the lighting is set up beautiful. So really like in the camera the image looks great um, and there's just a little bit of retouching if needed and, and done so depending on the shoot and the conditions like if we're doing products um, then often people want the products on a pure white background so they look nice in their catalog or e-commerce store yep. and so then yeah there's editing so to, to delicately chop out all that background so it's perfect um, yeah so the, good point depending on the type of shot there'll be little or a lot of post-production Yep. Okay. And there's probably there's some different types of photos that people might not be aware of as well, right? Like there's 360 degree inside your business photos and 360 degree product photos as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's the full mix, and that's the especially online. It's becoming so media heavier, and all the functionality is just amazing these days that you can you can have a full virtual tour of your workplace, which um, again, it could be like a podiatry which has a really nice feel about it what a great way for people to be able to explore and see and and connect with the place before they choose to buy with you or it could be an industrial workshop with a bunch of fancy equipment like there's so many different applications for that that's just, it's just awesome yeah yeah one thing that that works really well from a sales and marketing perspective that i talk to clients about all the time is doing whatever you can to take as much as that the first step of the sales process and take it online so Photos are a really good way to do that because if you have photos of the people, the place, and the products, then people can get a feel for what it's like to be there without having to actually be there. And it works. You see the numbers and you see it from clients. You get these emails, wow, we got so many calls this week after we did that. And it's like it's a really good feeling just to be able to do that for someone. And, and it's something so simple as well, right? People, are, and we see it in, you, know, you see it too in the workshops that. Everyone's looking for the magic ball at some, you know, tiny little tweak that's going to make all the difference. And, you know, they don't realize that something as simple as photos, good quality photos, is a magic bullet. But because it, I think maybe because it seems so simple and it's not complicated or hard, like it's, you know, it might take some time and some money, but it's a really simple thing to do. It just, yeah. it gets ignored. And it really is, like you said, a really good way 
to help you stand out amongst competitors as well. Like if you know someone searches in Google for a podiatrist and there's 10 other podiatrists and you're the only one with the people photos, then it just feels good when people get there. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about some of the other things. You know, it's that feeling that people get, that closeness or connection that makes all the difference. That's why they choose you over the 10 other people in the Google search results. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. It's a no-brainer. And like, but some people get it. Some people will never get it. Yeah. And, but it's so satisfying when you get it right. It's and it is. It's it's, and that I've got such a short attention span. If I kind of want to make progress in something, I just want it done now. And I think that's one of the satisfying things about photography. You can just go in, get the shots, get them online or wherever it's going, and like, there's an instant improvement for the next set of eyeballs that sees whatever that is. And that's pretty cool. That's satisfying. And I think you want to especially in business there's no shortage of things to do like there's an overwhelming amount of things to do so any any quick wins that you can make big leaps in your marketing for the littlest impact or effort possible then just be want just want to be all over it yeah yeah for sure and i love photos too particularly around web design stuff like i will always favor for building a client a, a new website for a client or doing a redesign i'll always favor doing photography over a complex design i think people focus too much on the design element and making things pretty as opposed to making them feel good, which you can do with photos in a very kind of simple site layout as well. Yeah, yeah. And we work with a couple of different web designers and they're, they, like having a nice collection of images to work from just makes it so much easier to build a really nice looking design when they've got nothing to work with. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. So what about in terms of, so how does the structure work? People, it's like a one-off project price and then, you know, if they need little tweaks and stuff done, then they can do that, you know, they have a relationship with you into the future. Is that kind of how it works, the engagement process? Pretty much. Like if there's, um, so there, there's, for example, if it's a product shoot and, for example, say it's wine bottles, then it's a pretty known quantity. It's a bottle of wine and we need this particular looking, looking image. Um, so... Um, yeah, it's, it almost comes down to like here's the price per bottle type thing. So people know whether they're getting one bottle done or ten bottles done or they come back in three months' time and want to photograph their three new range, then it really works quite easy like that. Yep. Um, often what will happen is – so that's that's for, for more for like product photography, similar with business portraits or headshots. It's like, hey, we've got 12 staff. Um, how much is it going to cost to come and photograph them? We can quote that up, do the job, and then in six months' time, there's three new people started. So um, forever doing that, just going to um, existing businesses and getting photos of their new staff. Yep. Um, and so, so that's those sort of um, projects which are pretty easy to quantify what's involved. Yep. Um, for we call it um, an image library, which is like like a marketing image library, which is just a bank of images that you can draw from you or your designer or anyone can draw from to um, use for your website, use for your Facebook, use for a print ad. And so that little library of custom images, that's like your little gold mine. And that, that can be, usually that doesn't exist for most businesses. It's like, oh man, we need a website, we got nothing. So the step one would be to come in and like get a nice collection of pictures to keep them going for a while, basically, to populate all the marketing and, and, and launch it. And then um, usually uh, people will see the value of it and then, you know, in six months' time, in 12 months' time, in two years' time, depends on change and, and the need for new images, then you can just either, either do a top-up, so, hey, can you come and photograph these new areas of our business or some things have changed, can you update the images? So it really just kind of can bend and mould depending on what you need. Yeah. Um, we have industrial clients that just that we photograph every completed project that they do. So upon completion, we come in, we know which shots they need and we take those shots for case studies and their portfolio. Um, so, yeah, it can be like literally a one-off exercise or it could be a weekly thing, it could be ad hoc um, depends on what people need, really. Yeah, and people can come to you. You have a studio as well, right? You have so the business is, has two arms, right? Is that is that how you break it down? You've got the studio, and then the it, other side of the business, you go out to see people. 
Yeah, exactly. So um, this, we've got a studio space which works great for um, most products that are pretty portable. So if it's easy for clients to courier or mail or bring products to us, um, there's a lot more gear in the studio that we can use. So it's always great to shoot in the studio. Um, headshots and um, portraits, we do even some fashion shoots we can do in the studio. Um, so that works really well. Often it's going to be easier for our clients for us to come to them, even if it's to do the products or the headshots. So everything's kind of packed down and mobile. So we're forever loading up the car, heading to their site, setting up whatever's needed to um, be able to take those shots. Cool. And um, so what about, okay, so say after it's all done, you've done the, the post-production on the photos, how do they get their photos? Do you stick them in a Dropbox folder? Are they put on a CD? What's, what's the deal there? Yeah, good question. And basically, however, it's going to work best for the client. So we can either – so every photo that's taken, the camera takes them a large format, like massive file. Yep. So that's typically called high resolution. High resolution or high res just means it's big pretty much, which is going to be perfect for printing. Um, if you try and email that or try and upload that to your website, it's not going to be great because it's just it's too massive file size. So then every photo we size down and make a smaller version, which is called low res or low resolution. And this is just a smaller version, which is perfect for anything or anytime you want to use it on a computer screen, basically. So on a website, on Facebook, email footer, LinkedIn. Um, so low res, they load fast and they still look great. Yep. So there's those two different versions. So from any shoot, we would supply those, all the images in those two different versions. So um, that can either be done with a Dropbox download link or um, USB in the mail. Um, clients can come to pick them up. But really, the, getting, getting them to the client, there's a few different options and whatever works best. Yep. A lot of um, the larger corporates have um, internet restrictions around Dropbox and file right. sharing type sites. So um, a lot of our clients there, we, they just want a CD in the mail so it gets to them. Um, other more mobile, smaller businesses, the, the Dropbox works great. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question about photography. Is there anything that, you know, before they pick up the phone, I mean, we talked about some of the strategic stuff, but what can people do to get more out of a photographer? Or, you know, is there some more thinking they can do to get the most out of you when you work with people or something along those lines? Yeah, I think like the few things to consider would be which can either be done before the first call or in the first call is I guess what's unique about your business. So w w ideally, if you can make, wave the magic wand, what kind of essence could you bottle up visually that would help tell your story or set you apart in whatever you're needing the photos for? So, and that's hard to articulate sometimes if you never really thought about like your point of difference or, you know, what your reason for being is, that's, that's kind of.